everyone, and welcome back to Another Pass at Another Pass podcast. I'm Case Aiken, and as always, I am journeying down memory lane with my co-host, Sam Alisea. Hi! And today we are looking back at episode 8 of the show, when we are talking about The Dark Knight Rises. Uh, so Sam, this is a episode with Ben and Addy, um, where we're looking back at, at the end of yet another trilogy. Uh, in this case, it is the Dark Knight trilogy. Um mm-hmm. When did you see this movie? I saw it in theaters, for sure. Like, I was... I mean, listen, you you come off that second film, and that second film... I mean, there were a couple of plot holes and things, but it is so good. Such good performances, and uh, you you forget, right? You forget, you kind of, like... Your brain kind of goes to sleep, and especially with, like, how great those performances were. Um, so I saw this in theater. I was very excited to see this in theater. And I definitely left the theater going, no, what, why, for so much of it. Um, but yes, yeah, yeah, that's pretty much how I felt about it. Yeah, I remember the critics at the time who got to see it in advance uh, were generally like, kind of meh and people were like really upset that they were kind of meh about yeah. it and then i saw it and i was like oh i get it yeah yeah i mean this this movie is seriously flawed and i think once people get into this episode i think there's a lot of really good observations that everybody in this episode makes um and i i think one of my favorite uh, observations uh, is just there's just so so many villains in this, and I I agree I agree with the statement that maybe maybe we don't need that Hollywood maybe we don't need the second third or fourth movie to be chock full of everyone in the villain verse. Um, yeah, it just yeah it gets all well, muddled. We we should let the episode speak for itself on, for sure. on that front, and then and then we'll come back to it yeah. and talk a bit but, about that. Um, to give people a heads up on terms of quality and everything, so this is a Ben and Addy episode done at the CPOV studios mm-hmm. uh, back in the day. Uh, so we are all in the room together. So the audio quality isn't that bad, but we do have an issue with the number of mics in play. There is some static every now and then, I guess like someone put their foot on a line or something, you know, but there's like some yeah. XLR kind of static that pops in every now and then. Um, but it but, sounds but okay. Overall, the, yeah, yeah, it, it sounds pretty yeah. good overall. Uh, we're we're finding our footing. This one's actually recorded a bit earlier in the cycle. I think this may have been the second recorded episode. Um, it, certainly on the early side. Uh, but like the reference to like end of trilogies and stuff is because like the Return of the Jedi episode is like what we had just done right before it. Uh, oh. and so like like I said, this may have been even the same night that we did Return of the Jedi. Uh, and so I'm finding my footing as a host still more so even than in the like the last two or three episodes mm-hmm. um, because it's so new to me at that point. Um, but I, you know, I we're we've got most of the the big beats at this point. Uh, it's mm-hmm. it's a bit more of a free for all in terms of a conversation. Uh, but I think it's a pretty fun episode. So uh, unless you have anything else to say, we should let the listeners, uh, you know, take a listen. Take a listen. Yeah. 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 Do it. Yeah. Welcome to Certain Point of View's Another Pass podcast. Be sure to subscribe, rate, and review on iTunes. Just go to certainpov.com. Thank you for tuning in to Another Pass podcast from Certain Point of View. I'm Casey Aiken, your host, and tonight with me is Ben Milton and Addie Thomas. Hey. Hey, guys. Uh, And today we're going to be talking about The Dark Knight Rises. It's one of those movies that uh, is not quite as good as the one we talked about last week. Uh, I would argue that it's... It's a crappy that, movie is what this one is. Oh, it's this hard to say that. It's, you it know is, what? It's disappointing is the real term. Disappointing, definitely. Because there, 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 there are aspects of it that are so promising in this movie. Yeah. Now, I wasn't trying to lead off our show just talking about the ending of trilogies and how they don't live up to the middle chapter every time. It happens a lot. But it's going to happen, and there, we got other ones on the docket. Uh, but right now, yeah, like Dark Knight Rises, man, that's disappointing. Batman Begins was so good, and the Dark Knight is so good, and it was so unique at its time. And then this movie is not, and it's 
it's painful for that. And, and the Dark Knight is the gold stand is practically become the gold standard by which all other superhero movies tend to be judged. I, I, I don't know if it's for, really for the standard. Anyway. It has it, been for yeah. a long time, but it, it's starting to change. I, think. I, yeah. I, I think that, well, cause the thing is the dark Knight came out the same summer as Iron Man right. and Iron Man, I think is really the movie that set the tone for how modern superhero movies are done. Uh, right. I think the dark Knight shows the most you can do for the old model of superhero movies. Like Batman begins felt like a, a similar movie to other movies so far like Batman Begins felt cut from the same cloth but a different director doing it as the first Batman movie or like the 89 Batman movie like yeah but don't you think that like with Nolan's like dark and gritty like we hadn't really seen uh, that the the Tim Burton Batman movie is doing the dark and gritty Batman Uh, like that was that was very cartoony it's still very cartoony I mean you got you got I mean it's Tim Burton waving his cloak and like people just falling over you know. Well, the fact that it's Tim Burton and the fight choreography is awful and, yeah. <laughs> and, and all that jazz. Like, sure, yeah. that's all there. But, like, we also had, like, 90s Spawn. Like, there were a bunch of uh, 90s okay. dark movies. Okay. Like, like they were doing dark comic book movies. And other – actually, there were some amazing dark comic book movies from, like, indie books at the time, which I don't, I don't know that's when true. they're going to do another indie book. But they – you know, like, they did Wanted, which was not good, but at right. least it was based on well, a dark book. You got and V for Vendetta. And you v, have yeah, V for Vendetta. Uh, Watchmen was post Dark Knight. Yeah, it was, a, it was around the same time. It was close. Oh, you know what? You're right. You're right. It was about the same year, actually, yeah. I think. No, the, 300 was around the 300, same time. Yeah, 300 came out before that. Um, you know, like Road to Perdition came out before that, which is right. one of my like gold standards yeah. of how good a comic book adaptation can be. Can be yeah. But that's because no one knows it's a comic, it's a comic book right. movie. <laughs> that's uh, how you can tell it's a good adaptation when nobody knows it's a comic book. Well, yeah. that's because it's based on a fairly obscure comic book that's based on a well-known manga. But well, it's like, a good story. <laughs> yeah. that's, that's, at the end yeah, of the day, it's a, really good it's story. a good story. Yeah. And that's what falls apart in Dark Knight Rises. Yeah, it does. <laughs> It's an uh, awful right. story. Yeah. Well, it, like, I, like here's the thing: like the the Dark Knight was everything Christopher Nolan ever wanted to say about the nature of heroism and in, in the modern world. Like uh, Batman Begins was about how a person can rise up, but Dark Knight was him being like, "We're going to take a crazy person and t- and test." a man of valor like Christopher Nolan movies are always about like men who are you know objective and like willing to keep on moving forward and do things because they're competent and great and that's how humanity is going to prevail and like using Batman as sort of like the apex of that like the Dark Knight was showing like how far can you push a man and how great an adversary can he face and still be a hero and like still come out of it uh, on the side of right maybe not on the side of law but on the side of right right um and Dark Knight Rises doesn't do any of that. Like, here's the thing. When when I saw Dark Knight Rises, I came out of it, and my first reaction was like, huh, that wasn't that great. But my second reaction was, but at least they didn't just do the Dark Knight Returns. And then when I woke up the next morning, I was like, fuck, they did just do the Dark Knight Returns. God damn it. <laughs> like, uh, it, it actually is pretty close involved. when you think about it. All they did was they sort of took other comic book references and yeah. overlaid it. The fake death in Dark Knight Returns is a whole lot better. <laughs> Let me just put it that oh, way. Oh, yeah. <laughs> like, uh, so, like, I, I go back and forth on the Dark Knight Returns because it was so good at the time when it came out. And, like, Didn't great you and I go see that opening weekend together? We saw we Dark at Knight. Uptown? At the Uptown? We saw Dark Knight together. We saw Dark Knight together. Yeah, yeah you saw Dark Knight Rises with me. Right. Yeah, no, I saw it. I I thought it was really good. good. No, I I saw Dark Knight Rises as part of an AMC movie night where they did all three Batman movies up until the midnight screening. Uh, And they they had just done this with Avengers a few months earlier, Mm -hmm. and that was amazing. And I was like so pumped for this one because I'm like, but you know what? I love the Avengers movies, but you know what's also awesome? Batman. Right. (laughs) (laughs) And after after this, this is when I started talking about how Batman's a Klansman. No, because here's the thing. Like, I think the... The story that they try to do with Batman is one where, one, they do it twice. Like, they do how Batman gets his groove back at the and beginning, again. and then he does it again. <laughs> Which is they, always a big problem. That uh, they never really do a good job with Bane. Like, they, they use Bane, and no one likes to use Bane, but they use Bane because he's, like, a f- fan favorite from the 90s, and people wanted to use a name character. Well, I thought they put a good twist on him, tying him to the, the League of Shadows. Oh, I absolutely would have done that. That's and, not That's not the problem. Yeah. The fact that they don't do any Bane things with him. It's just the name, I think, is the bigger Breaking problem. Breaking the back? 
you don't consider a Bane thing? Sorry, what I mean is more of like... The, they the, don't deal with the Venom and all that other stuff. Yeah, like people were like, oh, he's not big enough. I'm like, well, what if he gets a little bit bigger when he does it? You know what would have worked fine is if that mask had like a stimulant that like shot into him and all of a sudden he was like a little bit more aggressive. Right. Like he doesn't need to grow He does, if it, it's the realistic world, but like still have, have a nod so that some the steroid, character is still steroid. there. Because right now he's just the mutant leader from... Uh, from Dark Knight Rises, or pardon yeah. me, Dark Knight Returns. Yeah. What? Oh, and he didn't have a, and if he at least had a line like the, this is my operating table, yeah. then I would have totally nerded out for that. Oh, God. Every time I think about this movie, I just get so depressed. Well, because there's so many good pieces, like, <laughs> yeah. but there's all these big logic gaps, and they don't work the same way that, like, Dark Knight had big logic gaps that we were okay with, because the movie just moved, and it, like, right. you know, that opening heist with the Joker is so cool, but it doesn't make any sense. <laughs> yeah. Like, it's like, wait, the bus, like, pulls in? He, that guy just didn't shoot him? Why What? It, why is any of this happening that way? Like, none of that <laughs> makes any sense. But it's, like, sets up, oh, the Joker's a billion strategist, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, <laughs> Like the the thing is the the League of Shadows stuff kind of is the plot that I would have done the second Batman movie for. Like I had when Batman Begins, I was like, I hope the next movie is Bane and maybe Deathstroke, and there are two super assassins coming from the League of Shadows, and then we can move past the League of Shadows and move on to other Batman stuff. Like this movie, it's sort of like, oh, here's this thing from your. I guess you could say it's like here's the thing from your childhood. I, that I did like. I kind of yeah. like that callback to the League of Shadows and bringing that kind of full circle to close that. At, at the end of the trilogy. I, I thought that was kind of a good idea. That they finally because, come back to him or something. Yeah, because yeah. for me, the, the thing is, this trilogy had always been pointing to it. And you, we, saw, we just watched that super trailer. And the whole idea like was like... And they even talk about it in that last movie is this idea of Batman being a symbol. The, this Batman is, not, is a terrible detective. This Batman is not even a good action hero, to be perfectly honest. No, they, the fight choreography is not that much better than it was in the Tim Burton movie. Right. No. But this Batman is a crusader. Like, you know, it's grounded in that, that ideal of him becoming a symbol to inspire Gotham. He was never setting out to be this for the rest of his life. You know, right at the end of the first, at, at the end of Batman Begins, there's this idea that he could stop being Batman. But that everything was sort of working against him, that he always had to be this guy. I completely agree. And and this mo- and so that's why I like the idea of the League of Shadows coming back to sort of like test his resolve in being Batman to have to come out of retirement. I actually like the idea of him having to come out of retirement. They shouldn't have done it twice. Absolutely, like the whole idea of him like coming out once and then having the magic knee brace and then having a, a few pretty lame action scenes, to be honest. Yeah. Uh, and then uh, the the one action scene I do like is the breaking of his back. I, I really that like that really scene. That was really well done. And not having any music with it, I think is a, it was a great decision. It worked for me. I love I love Bane's voice in that movie, and I love the whole you know y- you were adopted by the darkness. I was born in it like that. Oh like, yeah, those were, I was fine with that. Like we were, we'd make jokes about him, but like yeah. I, think I that really was all like fine. Bane's the one thing I would keep in this movie. And I even yeah. like the whole ninety nine percent you know Occupy Wall Street thing that's kind of going on in the discussion. Because like the Dark Knight had the discussion going on with like a little bit in the background of the story. They had the whole thing about the surveillance state. And then you had this. Yeah, and there was movie. like the hints about Joker being a soldier. Right. Like, yeah, like it was, it was very much. I mean, there are movies that comment on their time. And, right. It, and this, it's hard and to get this away from movie that, but. had a lot of the whole, like, especially with Catwoman, you had the whole Occupy Wall Street yeah. discussion. And they shot it down at Wall Street. I had friends who were extras in that, and they weren't allowed to shave because they were playing cops. Right. Which <laughs> then, when you actually see the movie, none of them look like they have beards. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, but it's disappointing because all that Occupy Wall Street versus the one percent story never goes anywhere. It starts just like yeah. the real movement, <laughs> right? Man, if it was meta commentary about how they figure everything's going to fizzle out, just like Batman. <laughs> <laughs> no, like, all right. So let's actually do like a pitch for the things to fix. Like, I think. Like for, for me, the yeah. big thing that's got to change is Batman's got to die at the end of this movie. That's what disappointed me. For me, I think I could forgive a lot of these things because they even tease it throughout the entire movie. Is this idea of like we, you know, he has that conversation with Catwoman. It's like you don't know these people anything, and it's not. He he says I haven't given them everything, and his his quote isn't I haven't given them my fake death. It's right. It's, no, I I, 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 I completely agree with you. This would be that's one of the two things I would have like overwhelmingly changed. Yeah. The other one's the opening for me, which is that I don't think Batman should have been retired because I think that betrays the Dark Knight. Yeah. Like, and it betrays the Batman we've been given so far, but it betrays the ending of the Dark Knight. Well, I felt like the Dark Knight ends where he's going to go off and he's going to be a symbol. He is going to take on the burden of being this like crazy vigilante, even though 
the people in the note know he's actually really good, but he's still going to go off and be Batman. Like, I never felt like he was retiring at the end of The Dark Knight. I thought he was going off to continue being the Dark Knight, like, in the shadows, striking and making things yes. good. Yeah. yeah. And at the opening of this movie, it's like, oh, no, that was literally when he retired. Yeah. Like, it's not like, year, like, it's, yes, it's years later, but it's not like, it's like, oh, he went on for another five years and then retired, now he's old. Like, it's like, it's like 10 years later or something, game. I think is the exact limit something like that it's like not yeah. a big like time jump years, think, yeah. yeah and um, which leads to some weird scenes where people are like oh i've never like batman i can't believe he's like still alive and like like hold on to your seats kid like i was on the force back in the day when he <laughs> right. was around. Eight like years ago, guys. yeah it's it, these are the moments where it feels like they did the dark knight returns but that should have been more like a 20 year time jump instead of like Christian Bale still looks like a young man. <laughs> yeah. Except uh, he has to wear a knee brace now. Yeah. yeah. Like Batman should have just been going like it, we, uh, Addy mentioned, we watched that like super cut of the tra- of, uh, like of the trailers for the dark Knight movies, uh, Batman begins dark Knight and dark Knight rises. And it's so good. Like there's really nice symbolism and everything, but it never wants to talk about him retiring between dark Knight and dark Knight rises. Like it just feels like, no, he keeps going. Like it's the problem of the dark, like he faces in dark Knight is that he thinks he's got the status quo and then the Joker shows up and it escalates. In this case, it really should be like, he thinks he's got the status quo and Bane shows up and totally destroys him. Like Joker is a mental threat. Bane is physical a mental and threat. physical yeah. threat. Right. And then he should have been broken and gone for years. Like the time jump, the only big time jump that should have happened was between his back being broken <laughs> yeah. and then somehow him like pushing, the pit. like, yeah, like having his back rebroken into working again, <laughs> like whatever <laughs> happens there. Uh, I have an, I have a th- I have an idea pipe, for that. Yeah. I have an idea for that. Yeah. Uh, I like the idea of his back being broken and I like the idea of, of and I, I would strip this, this movie down to just Bane. I'd get rid of Talia and I'd get rid of Selena. You don't need them in this movie. Like we have like this there's this weird idea in Hollywood that pisses me off villains. so much like we had a movie with one really successful movie with one villain so now we need two villains. Okay, well we just had a movie with two villains. Now there's got to be four villains. Otherwise, this isn't going to work. We've got to escalate the stakes. No, you have to tell a goddamn compelling story. And if you can do that with one villain and one character, do that. You don't need to keep cramming all this extra shit in there just to cram it in there. I would agree. All right. So anyway, so Bane does what he does, captures Gotham, breaks Batman's back. But instead of sending him to this weird pit thing, he sends him to Arkham and imprisons him for crimes against Gotham in Arkham because essentially because now he's running Gotham and Batman's a criminal and so he locks him in Gotham Lucius and then he wages war on on Gotham and Wayne Enterprises Lucius Alfred and Gordon uh, enlist Tim Drake to help break uh, uh, Batman out of Arkham and it, now Lucius has, qu- has since actually followed through on his promise in the last movie and quit Wayne Enterprises over the whole super spy equipment stuff. And like, I'm not going to do this because, you know, it's so got to bring him out of retirement. No, he's gone to work with LexCorp. Ooh. And so he now has access to the, the Superman suit that Lex. It's a prototype. Wait, but you just it's said you didn't want to have multiple villains and shit. I don't. <laughs> I don't. But he has access to the prototype of the super suit for Lexus Superman fighting How suit. about instead of Bane and breaking that's... his back, he gets shrapnel in his heart, and then he has to figure yeah. out this. <laughs> <laughs> Close to that. And then but that's the what he has. spill, and he's blind, guys. <laughs> And then he gets it with gamma rays. <laughs> no, but he uses that. So he uses that prototype suit. So now you've expanded your universe into LexCorp and Superman and that whole thing. Okay. And, and, and you've given him the tool in order to fight Bane fairly. But in the pro, like he's never able to recover from his broken back. And so he either dies or is completely incapacitated by Bane in this fight, allowing then the Batman symbol to live on through Tim Drake, who picks up the mantle of Batman at the end of the movie. Yeah. On that note, Joseph Gordon-Levitt should have just no. been Tim Drake or should have been Dick Grayson. Like, right. Should have been. Right. Yeah, like, why were they, like, what did they, what was his name again? Oh, God. I, shit twit says the one. Yeah, it doesn't even matter. It's like, oh, uh, my real name is Robin. It's like, wasn't it like John Blake or something? Like Something, something like, like that, really yeah. Ambiguous. Really, yeah. Like, like, he could have been like. Uh, Anybody. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, yeah, that was disappointing. That they and then his real name did. was what was Robin. Yeah, it was Robin. His real name was Robin. 
Yeah, which that was, was awful. Stupid. Was like, was oh, you really should go bad. by that. It's 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 cute. It's cute. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's why he doesn't go by it. <laughs> yeah. So I, I think like that solves that problem though of of the broken back and him coming back and him dying at See, the end. Every time we talk about elements of this movie, I think of more complaints I have in this like. Yeah, that's kind of the thing. Like Joseph the, Gordon they, Levitt, like oh, that orphan look in your eye. Oh, and I knew such, you were Batman. It was such bullshit. <laughs> oh wait, but he knows He's it. He's a better he, detective but, than Batman. Yes. But Commissioner Gordon is like Bruce, Bruce Wayne. Wayne. What? <laughs> like, <laughs> like I thought that was just. I, I thought he just knew and he just never said it. What? Which was like the whole thing. I mean, that was kind of a Frank Miller idea. But like, I dug that idea. And it felt like that was the thing they ran with with the first two movies. And then all of a sudden it's like, Bruce Wayne? What? Yeah. what? <laughs> like, yeah, exactly. And like the take. I mean, this is... It was so hokey. This kind of feels like the Schumacher version of the first two movies, where it's like, let's just go as campy as we can. (laughs) Call back. The the other thing is, like, you see... P.S. Schumacher Batman movies were ahead of their time. Mm -hmm. (laughs) (laughs) They're not not good, but I know what he was going for. Nope. (laughs) Never forgive that man. Batman has zero ingenuity in this movie. Agreed. You know, there's there's clever things he's kind of he does it like in the first in Batman Begins. Like, I mean, yes, it's Batman. Batman Begins. He's a ninja, which right. isn't necessarily that he's a detective, but he at least is like uh, effective at what he does. He has cool ideas. Moment? Yeah. Well, that's yeah. A great. That's a great moment. From, I love. Yeah. You know. From Batman Year One. Yeah. Right. Exactly. <laughs> you know, and then like you, and then I, I like the idea of you know the cell phone technology and surveillance state stuff in the Dark Knight. You know, just with the nature of what was going on with the threat. Um, but there's nothing like there was like all right, well we got the Batwing guys in in, in this movie, and it was like, yeah. it, it like where the really, hell did that come from? Yeah, and it you've really been in much. retirement. Yeah, and, and, and the, uh, and the we auto, have it hidden oh, under a tarp. Doesn't like, work, guys, remember every five minutes we have to be reminded that the autopilot doesn't work. Because <laughs> why the fuck would you need autopilot in that thing? <laughs> well, I can think of a lot of reasons for autopilot. Yeah, no, you need autopilot thing. for that. Where do you have a parking space for that thing? You need you autopilot. autopilot. Hey, where do you park? refill that thing? <laughs> what are you talking about? Why do you have it? You've been in retirement. <laughs> well, Lucius was working on it. He doesn't uh. have it. Lucius worked on it and showed. Oh, oh the oh. autopilot doesn't work. Okay, Lucius. But, appa- yeah. but apparently, Bruce fixes the autopilot because you know. Yeah. He's an engineer. That would have been what? cool. Yeah, you know what? Exactly. You know what would have been cool if if Lucius Fox went off and was working on something else, and that was his like. Batman goes and finds him, and they refit something else. Lucius worked on at a different company, or or for like, the U.S. government. Like, like it doesn't. LexCorp. I mean, LexCorp would be cool, but yeah. Here, like the okay, so like one of the rules of of these like repitches is like we can't be talking about like the movies as they are now. We have to be talking about movies as they were happening then. Right. Like, and this was clearly not going to ever involve. Well, but that's the thing. There are weird elements of it. Like this is a post of it's. It is a post Avengers movie, literally, but it's it's a post like Marvel Phase One movie, like very much so. Right. Um, and you could have easily so, spun this off. Well, into there, and there's those elements, like there, like the fact that they use Bane and that the that they have. Your name is Robin. <laughs> they, they have these moments <laughs> in there. It's Nolan finally kind of like pay, playing nice with fans, whereas he really didn't want to for the first two movies, uh, or especially The Dark Knight. Yeah. Like the, well, he threw Zaz in uh, the first uh, into Batman. Yeah, against. well, that's because Goyer had more of a writing credit on the first oh, one. Than, true. Yeah, like Go- like Goyer was always going to do that. Yeah, Goyer writing and then being tempered by uh, somebody else. Yeah, by someone else is usually the way to go. Like Goyer right. by himself, eh. yeah. <laughs> but. <laughs> But Goyer with like Christopher Nolan like trying to make a good movie like that that actually works That's out a pretty good well. Combination, yeah. yeah. Uh, <laughs> uh, this could devolve into Goyer anecdotes. Uh, <laughs> moving on, so <laughs> so that like the thing is Batman. I felt we betrayed the Batman that we that we had up until that point. Mm-hmm. I felt that the villain that they present isn't really a worthy villain for what we what we want him to face. Um, I think that they try to present him as being. What Bane is, which is he's both smart and physically tough, and that, like how can Batman beat someone who's both as smart as him and stronger than him physically? Um, we force too similar of an arc uh, in the middle of the movie that happened at the beginning, and then all these stretches for how Batman gets back, and all the you know, like Lucius Fox could have been the answer for how Batman gets back, it, right. and that Batwing could have been the answer for how he gets back. Or like, don't put right. him in the freaking pit. The pit was. Unnecessary. Like the, I, I, the, the pitch, the pit. you know, the thing is, like, like we said, we were just talking about the the supercut trailer, like the, him climbing up the or his dad like descending from the well and pulling him up, and then 
cutting to him climbing up the wall, you really see that symbolism of like go, uh, like ascending to the light, which is like a very Christopher Nolan kind of shot. And it's right. it's very much a part of who Batman is. Like his father coming from the light descending on is sort of the is is Batman. Like the fact that there's a bat that flies by in, in that first or in that movie, like in the in the shots of that in Batman Begins, that's who Batman is. Batman isn't the bat. Batman is the person coming <laughs> there's a swarm of bats and it's scary. And then there's this man who's like going to save you descending on a rope to like bring you back up into the light. Like that's right. Batman to Batman. That's what he thinks he is, but he's really just nuts. Uh, that's, uh, that's what I just said. He's that's what Batman is to Batman to like, himself. <laughs> yeah, he exactly. He's his dad or like, it, or he's trying to live up to his dad, like saving the day from the scary bats. Well, cause that's a big moment in Batman begins is when, you know, grown up Bruce Wayne is down in the caves and, you know, and the, the, the swarm of bats like surrounds him and he stands up, mm-hmm. you know, in the, in the middle of them. Like, and that's, yeah. a, that's a pretty triumphant moment. And I, and this was supposed to, like, yeah. Having him climb up moment. that, that's a cool yeah. scene. It doesn't make any sense. No, right. not at all. You not, know what would have been better if he was being sense. forced to live inside of Bruce, of Wayne Manor. Like if he was being trapped in his own cave. Like if Bane broke right. in, beat him down, and then they were like keeping him alive down there, like imprisoned in his own house. That would have been cool. I, I think that would have been really good. Rather than burning down Wayne Manor, which was stupid. Like, yeah, why does rock crumble because it's fire? Yeah, like, that didn't make any sense. <laughs> doesn't make any sense at all. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, we're, hold on. We're not bitching about the first movie. Yeah. <laughs> like, we're, we're I bitch, love the first We're bitching movie. about the third the one right now. Thank you. <laughs> I, it's all blurring together. <laughs> <laughs> it's all blurring together. Yeah. But, well, yeah. Wayne Manor, well, apparently, uh, like, clearly fake, uh, like, manipulation of stocks couldn't be undone by the uh Yeah, the like, FTC. no one would ever notice. It's like, oh, all of a sudden batman just sold or pardon me bruce wayne sold all of his money woo right after like the stock market gets attacked like no nothing like yeah, none of that yeah. would have been allowed like yeah. the stock markets wouldn't have been open the next day right <laughs> yeah and he would have got all of his money back yeah immediately all of the money stuff is like ridiculous and yeah. the, and other people have done it like well like crack just did a video i think a week ago talking about how dumb it was like yeah. it's it was and it was totally unnecessary because even like you don't have to take away his assets for for Bane to outsmart him. In fact, mm-hmm. letting him continue to have it just gives smarter. more credit yeah. To, yeah. to Bane. But it, they almost like, and I think that's a problem with this movie is they nerf Bane a lot for the sake of Talia Al Ghul's reveal. And it oh. felt like, and, and the Talia Al Ghul reveal is a big problem for me because for for many reasons. But that that's one moment where I feel like Nolan became a little too enamored with some of his gimmicks. Like it really felt like, oh, I did this. I was able to pull off something in the Prestige. I think I could pull off this as well, you know, and 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 Talia, like it just doesn't make sense for Talia to like not take her vengeance at any point earlier, and not just that, like you have <laughs> you have the broken back and you put him in the pit. So did she already know that Batman was going to come back from that because she waits to reveal herself until he comes back to Gotham? Yeah, like, no, that, should, that probably she... should have been the reveal earlier. And why yeah. didn't she just kill him while she's having yeah. sex with him in Wayne Manor? Uh, like, there's I, all this I'm dumb fine, stuff. Yeah, I'm fine with her key letting him stay alive and watching Whoa, Gotham crumble. No. Her whole idea was to, to torture and kill him. She wanted yeah, him he, dead. He, not. She wanted revenge. For her father's murder, she wanted him dead. I don't think anything she does makes sense. Yeah, I, I, I we all knew Talia was coming. Like that was yeah. no, that was no surprise. Was, you can't do a Raz Al Ghul, or pardon me, Rachel Al Ghul. God damn it! The, yeah, I know they. Messed yeah, they the, messed me up. Now yeah, I just said it wrong. Rache. It's Rachel Al Ghul. Um, you can't do a Rachel Al Ghul without having Talia. Like that's ridiculous. Why would you like? <laughs> it's like doing. Uh, it, <laughs> I'm trying to think of like the best example. It's like doing a Robin movie without Batman. It's frankly one of It's like... <laughs> it would be the biggest disappointment ever. No, but you know, cause, like, if you want to strip Batman of everything, like all of his assets and make him like prove himself, like have him be revealed as Bruce Wayne and have That's him be a criminal. That's all you got to do, yeah. Like, right. Have, like, and the they movie could, could have open... done that. They could have done that using uh, the previous movie, Spy Technology. If Bane had been able to get his hands on that technology... And use it to find out who Bruce Wayne is. And yeah, out that, him. His sins, all of his sins, coming back to haunt him. Yeah, like, and they did some cool stuff like that, where he uses the sins of like them trying to cover up, you know, um, Harvey face. Dent's death and stuff like that. God damn, that was a disaster. Uh, I like the idea. Of and that there wasn't that much he was really covering up. He was just sort of taking the fall for the other two kills, and then Harvey Dent fell to his death. Isn't 
that nuts. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, th- that was a fucking disaster. Yeah. yeah. The, the use of it all was very weird. And they were trying to make some like overly broad statements about like the Patriot Act. But, right. but where it's that like hard, really like Harvey Dent Day or whatever inside, like inside one city, martial law is going on. And yet the rest of the world has, has no problems, whatever. Like Gotham <laughs> City is a, a kingdom unto itself. And like, here's all the things. And Batman's it's Dark Knight. And Gordon is it's king. Like, what? None of that makes yeah, sense. None of this makes sense. Where is the National Guard? Where is <laughs> well, yeah, where, outside? Remember where is it? Yeah, 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 right. Okay. Oh, yeah. really From the sovereign state of the United States against the sovereign state of Gotham City. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, once, hold you blow up, uh, once you blow up Heinz Field, I think they took it seriously. <laughs> <laughs> you blow up a bridge, apparently the National Guard is useless. <laughs> they well, can't they do anything. Up the bridge. Yeah, they did. They blew up the bridges. No, they didn't. Oh, uh, they only blew up the uh, Heinz Field at that point? Yeah. When did they blow up the bridges? Uh... I don't think they actually and, and do. No, the they city. do. They do. They blow up the bridge. We just watched the, the Supercut trailer where they show the scenes of I it. I thought they just had the, uh, they had like a blockade on the bridge. Because if you remember, they even run. No, the, no, he, it blows remember up they the. Bu- the bu- they try getting uh, John Blake on the bus to get the orphans out of the city. I do remember bridge. that. Yeah. So that, there's another thing. Oh, that no, it must have been later then. So Because the, the bridge wasn't the down. No, because that's at the end. John yeah, Blake and the kids are at, at the, the end. end of the movie. So maybe it was one of the bridges and he allowed yeah, one to stay. Yeah, maybe they just left one bridge. That doesn't make any sense. I don't remember. Ah, <laughs> the one road out of Gotham was sense. Yeah. We can't keep track of how this movie goes because it doesn't make any goddamn sense. Did, he, wait, did the Joker sh- blow up bridges? No. Because, no. yeah, he forced them to use the ferries, remember? No, he threatened that there were bombs on the bridges, so they were using the ferry. I thought he blew up the bridges and they had to use the ferry. Well, I don't know. This, wow. <laughs> this is a fucking Holy hell, how did this happen? Like, movie. Yeah. Because we saw... Just, I, like, wait, how do I not remember like this? I Night just Rises. rewatched Dark Knight. <laughs> I'm positive Bane blew up bridges. I'm positive Bane blew up bridges. I'm positive Bane blew up bridges. Yeah. He maybe didn't blow up them all up, which doesn't make any sense. Why wouldn't you? Yeah. If you're going to blow up bridges and isolate... There was at least one bridge, though, that was still operational. <laughs> yeah, because uh, that's the one that Batman stands on top of when he crawls out of the pit and miraculously gets back to Gotham City in 48 hours. Yeah, again, it should have that should have been a big time jump. Like the opening of the movie should have been not as far forward in the future than, and Batman should have been like going on about his business being Batman, and then Bane shows up and fucks everything up, and then like screws up Gotham real bad, and it could be like Cataclysm, you know, to tie in other Batman stories where like Gotham gets cut off from the rest of America, in this case, is because of super bad terrorist acts instead of like an earthquake, um, and then follow like a couple, you know, I guess a couple years later, and it's like this weird wreckage where they can't even pin down where Bane is. He's like Osama bin Laden moving around inside the city, so they can't like do a strike force to take him out. And it's like right. so well, weird. Like, what is the national politics of a terrorist holding a city hostage? Yeah, and that that's another yeah. question. Like, we're like we know what happens with Scarecrow. Where's Joker? Well, they, I mean, that was I a mean, conscious decision. Like, we, yeah. like they didn't yeah, want, but he should be there. Like, he's there's the talk city. about, I mean, yeah, but I he get it. He ledges death. death. I get not. it, but he should be there. You should see signs of the Joker. You should see, you don't have to see him. Yeah. But he should, yeah, just if, if he's got to be in play. He's got to be. If there was just play. graffiti of the Joker yeah. in places, he's got to be in play. Right. Yeah, but he can't be so in play because then you're wondering why aren't we seeing him more or why isn't he the real threat? But that's, but that's again, that's the problem with this plot idea of taking over Gotham City and then releasing everybody out of Arkham. If you're going to release everybody out of Arkham, yeah. everybody's in fucking play. I'm sorry. Like, that's what the it, deal. Did, I mean, what did if he breaks... Uh, didn't they say if for this movie that he had been... <laughs> I know it's a crappy reason, but he was like transferred to like Iron Heights or something like that? Like, I don't, know if they, I don't think they even out, outright say it. I thought... I, well, not in the movie itself, but I thought there was like pre, like publicity. Yeah, I mean, they, before they, there, I mean, there was a lot of talk about it, and, it, and apparently Nolan had wanted to do stuff with with Heath in, oh, uh, again and have him be a, a central figure. Like, I think if you wanted to make, I mean, I don't know how much this is in taste, but if you wanted to make Bane a really badass and he destroy, like, blows up Arkham and frees up Joker, like, have him just drop the body and you never even see his face, but drop like clearly like the green the hair, hair like into the water or something and it like floats away or something like that, like. Oh, that would be so to, badass. To restore order. Yeah. Kills no, no, like Joker. To show, to show like that he establishes dominance of yeah. the city. 
Oh shit, that would be awesome. Because <laughs> I totally would have bought dark that. Yeah, savior I've, in a way, and the whole idea. Yeah, like of the I've of broken your knight, and now I've killed your jester and yeah. throws him into the water. Oh, so good. I like that a lot. That would like, be great. Like those could be some cool moments. And then, like I said, like uh, like Osama the shit out of him. Like have him be moving around, yeah. like inside the city. They know they never know where he's based, and so like teams are trying to move around constantly. But he's got by like, innocent people. Yeah, exactly. Like you could make Bane a legitimate threat. You could even fucking keep Talia as like someone who he works with, like who is like on the person. outside, yeah. like his the, contact the, back it, to the League of Shadows. Exactly, but also like is the public face on the other side, but not in the city. Like, well, because they kind of did it a little bit where like uh, they don't really, you know, build on it or, or really you know execute it properly, but like. He's almost like the face of, you know, the 99%. And she's kind of working on the side of the billionaires and the 1%. Right, yeah, she's supposed to be the nice too. face. Like, right. she's the only voice of reason and compassion in Wayne right. Enterprise. Yeah. Uh, that was garbage. Well, I think th- I think there's an interesting idea there. It's just not done well executed. Well, yeah. yeah, exactly. <laughs> there's so many good ideas and well-shot scenes and, like, all yeah. these things in this movie. And it's just not a good movie. <laughs> what did you guys feel about the idea of Gotham rising up? That to On me was itself. that was the most important part of it for me. Like, like I, the policeman rise mean at the end. And when the yeah, and the people I wanted to the, see. I, I like the I, I like the idea of the police and the people rising. The execution of that again in a big like pickets charge type moment doesn't make any damn sense. But you could you could move like in a city. Why are you having a charge? You could mm-hmm. have guerrilla warfare. Yeah, you can have them still rise. You can like you can uh, like I kind of imagined like when I remember seeing those trailers, like I, and you saw the big fight in the street. Like I thought you know, and and you even saw the confrontation with with Bane versus Batman in the street. Like I would think that's where they f- have their final fight. But Bane wins. Bane breaks him and kills him there. Reveals him as Bruce Wayne to the people, but the people take back Gotham. That it's finally that been that, badass. That's finally the the. This is finally like, the moment that they rise. I, on like, their I was own okay outside with, of their apathy. You see, I was okay with Batman dying by way of like him getting like having to like winning almost, and then like the bomb at the very end, and he yeah. tries to get away and it blows up. <laughs> like I, I'd be okay with that. Like uh, Venture Brothers did a really good parody of that yeah. in uh, All This and Gargantua too. Uh, where like at the very end a character like sacrifices himself and everyone's like he's gonna get away in the last moment and then it just like goes off and Brock's like nope <laughs> <laughs> the, the, the bomb never works for me and this is not Nolan's fault but this is it, it, I oh it's dumb it's and it was Batman like 66 like, uh, sometimes you can never get rid of a bomb yeah. <laughs> I just wish there were like ducks that went by at some point or something <laughs> and like a, like a bunch of nuns in like different mo- like places where he had yeah. to avoid but I, I think we agree that Batman <laughs> needed to be pushed to his limit and had to like willingly sacrifice himself now if yeah. that's in in a fight or to like carry a bomb far enough away it doesn't really matter like it's the willing sacrifice that needs to be the, the thing for him because he needs to be pushed to his that, that, who, that is who Batman is it's not oh I like took a fall for someone and now I'm like I can't really go out in public anymore like it should have been he's broken and then he thinks he's broken and then he finally like forces himself back together and then that's the moment where he, like because Batman is just drive and determination at this point like well that's what right. this that, Batman that's is. what this Batman right. is yeah. like he's he's not a well rounded person he is just Batman just wearing a Bruce Wayne mask obsessive. sometimes. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and, and that's the thing. That's why I think the opening of the movie betrays the first two movies and sets the tone of a movie that just doesn't really have a message the way that the first two uh, kind of did. Like, it, it's it's off-brand at that point. I, I don't know what else you could do to fix this movie besides kill Batman. Like, I don't think there's any other way to end this movie and end this trilogy with without making it. That's the most powerful way to end it. Here, here's it's my question. not only the most powerful; let's, it's the only correct way. Right. Let, let's say the movie is exactly as it is, except Batman does die. That how that does helps that feel? A lot for it me. Raises its raises its credibility. Yeah, inc- because a lot. Because then, like, you do have the moment. Like, because I do like the idea. Like, I liked you know the moments between Alfred and and Bruce. Like, you know, Alfred didn't want to see the the Wayne family end this way. And you know, like even like the Alfred's ugly cry at the at the graveyard was sort of like touching in a, in, a, in its own way. But then, like, they betray that immediately. Even it, Selena. Like Selena's comments about like you've given enough, right? Like all of, stop. Like, all of those had built to that idea. So if 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 they had actually killed him, it, yes, it's a very flawed story. But I think 
I'm able I'm willing to ignore a lot of the flaws of that story because the message as much as it it had like went a couple different places it didn't need to it still stayed on f- focused on the idea of him having to be the symbol to Gotham because then you have the statue and everything yeah. that's, that's it's the yeah. easiest way to fix this movie yeah, yeah. it well, is the just, just right there way. that fe- that movie feels better just with that one change and the rest of the movie is still deeply flawed and doesn't make any sense like and that's that's but, all like, but it's satisfying right exactly right. we get we at least get the payoff at the end right I think that that one adjustment there and if the opening Batman was was still active but that would help but was being hunted by the police instead of yeah. like just he, just he just fully retired Bruce like Wayne, yeah. he couldn't be out in public for too long because people would like cops would chase him and this would happen all the time Bane shows up and breaks him and that like if that's it and that's not even really dramatically redoing that many scene shot like we're oh, yeah. we're, all, we're actually talking about reshoots at that point not even full-fledged like a uh, like from start to finish remake that movie is still better even with the giant plot holes and like awkwardness of the bomb and Talia and Bane not being really Bane and, you know, and, and Catwoman being shoehorned in there and like all these things going on in this movie that just doesn't, just, just, just failed. Well, shoot, Batman dying, you don't have to reshoot anything. All you have to do is show that empty table in Paris. Yeah. <laughs> like that's all you need. Fuck, that, that's a so much more hollow like moment, but there's still, you know... But there's, there's still hope also yeah. with then cutting back to uh, John Blake, Robin, whatever yeah. his name is, yeah. in the Batcave. Yeah, yeah, look, you know, yeah. Those are like recognizing I, that he could take I up that mantle and that crazy symbol. About that, well, no, you, you weren't, weren't crazy about that because yeah. Batman didn't die. Right. But if yeah. Batman dies and, and you see somebody up, else right. taking up the symbolism of Batman, that's true. Now also, we all didn't of a see the costume. <laughs> like, yeah, that's true. You know, uh, so I had a bunch of friends who worked on it in a bunch of different cities, and a few of them knew a bit more about the story beforehand and told me about it beforehand. Oh, so really? the Robin thing, I was completely aware of 100 percent before I even like walked into the theater or saw too many commercials. Like yeah. it was like, oh, you know, Joseph Gordon Levitt's going to be Robin. I think okay, everyone that's kind of expected him. I, to a be lot of people of expected Robin. it. Like, yeah. in yeah, fact, some people were like, he's John. Like what? Yeah. But like, I knew how it was going to play out at the very end yeah. with that and whole it was scene. Kind of amalgamation of like several different Robins. Yeah, uh, yeah. Minus his tights. Yeah. Well, he's, yeah. none of them were acrobats. Right. <laughs> I guess he was closest to Jason Todd. Like, if yeah, if Jason thought, Todd was just like in an orphanage and actually grew up to be a good kid eventually. Yeah. Like, uh, it would have been better. A weird choice. It was weird just to not do it. Like, yeah. yeah all all these are weird. It was, choices. it was a total dick dick tease. It was a dick move, yeah. a Dick Grayson move. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's. I think it's funny because I don't understand why he needed the feeling to like why he felt he needed to hold back on that reveal. Like it doesn't add any real surprise. Like I'm like I n- I never felt like oh damn that's Robin when all of a sudden he says you know his yeah. name his real name my name is Robin. Robin yeah yeah. <laughs> Yeah, not to mention that no character has ever been named Robin. <laughs> right. Yeah, yeah but, it was a weird choice. But he was Robin in in role long before. Like if yeah. the fact that <laughs> so, your real name is Robin is so dumb. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry. Yeah. Like, uh, it's a little too on the nose. The it's yeah. a little too on the nose. Yeah. Which is surprising for Nolan. Like he's not really known for he has the appearance uh, of being complex, but he's not very, he's not nearly as subtle as I, I think. No, think. but he's not usually that on the nose. Either. Interstellar? This Wasn't that on the nose? This could be the beginning of the, of the end. <laughs> yeah, like I made, like after Dark Knight Rises and I came to terms with how bad that movie was because I tried to convince myself it was a really good movie. Mm-hmm. Well, uh, you loved that while. movie when we first saw it. Yeah, because I, I was like, mm. Yeah, I don't know. And like, as I thought about it, it was like really bad. And I went to see it again. I was like, oh, I like this movie. And then as time went on, I was like, no, that was a really, really, really bad movie. Yeah, like <laughs> and when I, I came like, out of it, because again, watched watched it at the, all three in a row after working a full day, and I think I was pretty drunk at this point. Like we had like brought in like booze into the theater, and it walked, went through all three of them, getting drunker and drunker and drunker. <laughs> um, it, like it was coming out of the movie I was like delirious and just like in this weird place and like I think I like this I understand why people don't like this I don't know what's going on where's my brain and the next day I'm like oh I'm hung over this uh, movie did I like so it good. I don't know I always and, felt they I wished they had killed him I always I did always yeah. feel that 
Well, you went into the movie like swearing that oh, they were going to kill Batman. Of course. And I told you flat I, you I swear to God, we would have this argument yeah. every day, Case. He was like, they're going to kill Batman in this movie. It's the only way that this whole story can end because he's a symbol. And the only way that you can make the symbol live on is to kill the hero so that somebody else can pick up the symbol. And they're going to do this. And I said to him, I swear, it's Batman. Yeah. DC is never going to let you kill Bruce Wayne. Yeah. It's Which never going dumb. to happen. Like, it that, really they is. really should allow that for this story because it's the complete conclusion of the story. It's a complete conclusion of this story. You're absolutely right. But the nature of the way comics books works is we're perpetually in the second act. We're never allowed to get to the third act where there's a real resolution and completion of the story. And so... They, they're, they're not going to let you do that yeah. because that's the only way that you can continue to have Batman stories. Yep. Yeah. But the problem is that the Dark Knight is actually the break into three in terms of like the larger story arc because like the second act of Batman is him being Batman and the status quo of Batman fighting all the different bad guys and cleaning up Gotham. And then the break into three is like, oh, now the stakes are raised and things are actually going to come down crashing on you. So the Dark Knight is that break into three. And then Dark yes, Knight Rises from a should mo- have been the conclusion. Of yes, this from a movie standpoint and from a trilogy standpoint, absolutely. But DC as a comic book company. Oh, yeah, I completely understand doesn't what you're saying. get that. Yeah, that's I didn't understand that at that point in time. I completely understand what you're saying. And I 100 percent agree. Uh, it's just. Dumb it's that they wouldn't allow that to happen. Yes. Right. Because if they had, the movie would have been so much better. Yeah. So just much just better. that one change would have made us all feel way more satisfied about it. And that's, I think that's the thing. We, we've pinpointed it's an awkward beginning that feels betraying of, the, of everything and an ending that is unsatisfying for the three movies that we just subjected ourselves to. And the first two have this one strong through line and theme that then the final one just completely misses that boat, but seems to espouse it up until the very end. It, it feels like it pulls back right at the end. Right. And that sucks. Yeah. that And, and I, again, that pulling back right at the end, because like they have you for a moment, they make you think it, and then... I don't think it's even five minutes before they reveal that he's still alive. Like, <laughs> no, not, not, maybe yeah. a minute and a half in, of actual movie time. Right. But I, I feel like we're just beating a dead horse right now. So thanks, everyone, for tuning in to another pass. Next week, we'll be talking about Highlander 2, The Quickening. Thanks, guys. And uh, stay scruffy, my nerf herders. Thanks for listening to Certain Point of View's Another Pass podcast. Don't miss an episode. Just subscribe and review the show on iTunes. Just go to certainpov.com. Video games are a unique medium. They can tell stories. Immerse us in strange, fantastic worlds. Blur the very boundaries of our reality. But at the end of the day, video games are fun. Whatever fun is to you. I'm Jeff Moonen. And I am Matt, a.k.a. Stormageddon. And on Fun and Games, we talk about the history, trends, and community of video games. It's a celebration of all the games we play and all the fun we find within them. And there's so many more games out there. So we hope you'll share in that conversation with us. Fun and Games podcast with Matt and Jeff. Find us on certainpov.com or wherever you get your podcasts. And happy gaming. And we're back. Oh, boy. Uh, Yeah. So it's funny listening to this episode because I hadn't like revisited like the Schumacher Batman movies at this point. And I and I wouldn't be coming from my current standpoint of like, oh, no, there can't be fun. Um, Like I I just casually just say, oh, they're bad um, and make some jokes about them because that's sort of like the, you know, the in thing to do at the time, um, which I regret. You know what? That's fair. I think I think we grow. I think we learn, and uh, and I and I appreciate that you apologize for them. <laughs> Here, yeah, the I review also point. Don't want to yuck anyone's yum about the Dark Knight Rises. Like I understand why you might think that it's a great movie, and I don't disagree that there are some really good things going on in it. Um, you know, it's still way before we have gotten into whatever the state of like comic book movies are in now, where it's like CGI like nightmares for for everything. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, and part of the, the pandemic and making it difficult to film all in one 
you know, at, at location and stuff. Right, right, right. Lots of people, you know, yada, yada, yada. There, there's lots of reasons for it. And I don't dislike all of these movies. But, you know, the era of like this degree of practical effects that we were all this excited about uh, for a superhero movie is it has been a it has been a minute. Um, but uh, I, that 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 said, I still think this is the weakest of the Dark Knight trilogy by a considerable margin. Oh, for sure. I mean, I think I think the biggest issues with this film is the structure and the writing. I mean, like, honestly, like the performances overall aren't bad. Like there's no one who's like bad in this film. I mean, like people make fun of like the Bane voice and all of that stuff, but it's it's not it's not bad. And actually, I will say that listening you know to Gary this. Gary Oldman, actually, I would argue, even though I love Gary Oldman and he's a great Commissioner Gordon, I think he is like just not doing a lot in this movie and like has several very clunky uh, deliveries, particularly the Bruce Wayne uh, bit that happens. In OK, there. yeah, that's fair. That's fair. I, I wasn't thinking of that. Well, that's just so. Uh, but do you, do you think that's just him or do you think that's like the writing? You know, it's it's hard to say exactly, but I, I will say that this movie had the least for him to do. And, yeah, uh, y- you know, I, I don't think he did a lot with it as the other side of it all. I mean, like I loved it. Carry on. I, I am super not trying to, like, put anyone down in this because I generally agree. Good, good actors. And like this franchise is great. I just think he didn't have a lot to do. And the lines that he had uh, were not delivered the best. But, you know, if you don't have any momentum, you can't be, uh, you know, breaking records. So, yeah. 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 Fair enough. Um, no, I, I, I think like just structurally, like it's just so, you know, difficult on the timeline. Right. It's so hard to ignore the like really vast issues in this script. I, I think it's like not entertaining enough for you to like forget, like, like he breaks his back. He's in a pit. He he heals very quickly, climbs out of the pit, how gets all the way back to Gotham. We're not even sure how far the pit is, right? Like there's no like it's really hard to know what the world map looks like because of the timing of when it gets back. Like like it really yeah, seems it feels like a fantasy setting. Right. And it feels like in that regard. It's it's the issue that like season eight of game of thrones had like you the people spent like seasons like two or three seasons crossing from one end of the continent to the other but by the eighth season people are just like bumping around places like you know danny and and john are like oh no to the wall and then they're there right away from king's landing or it's just it's that kind of thing. It's like so like it's just we're moving fast, right? And like you can say, oh well, she has dragons, but not everyone's riding those freaking dragons. Okay. The rest of the army has to walk. And so it's kind of like the same thing here, where like they're not like it feels like it feels like Bane took him somewhere far away in a desert area and dropped him in a pit. But somehow I think it was postured that 48 hours may have passed, right? Like, like it, right. it doesn't seem like a lot of time between, like, you're dropped in a pit and, like, I now own Gotham. And, oh, my God, he's back. Oh, no. So, like, those things are, like, really bugged me when I left the film. Like, when I left the theater, like, that was, like, glaring to me. Like, it was just, like, how did that have I didn't compare it to Game of Thrones back then. I was just like, how did that happen? And how did this happen? And they said that Bane blew up all the bridges and there were no ways in or out of Gotham. And yet that woman finds him on a bridge and I'm so confused. Did they rebuild the bridge? Is it a border? Like, what is going on? Like, I don't, like, it would make sense strategically for Bane to leave one bridge alive for his own goons but then there should have been like people guarding it i don't know it's just like one of those things where they're like there's these these small just small little details that like that are not small at all (laughs) that are just not considered in any way shape or form yeah i don't usually try to be like man i had some good points but in this episode i had some good points like there's there were several spots in this movie where um, it really would have benefited from a bigger time jump in the middle and allowed for, you know, I, I pitched that Bane should have showed up and like 
you know, taken Batman out and then Batman's out of commission for a while. And that's why he comes back like and not have him out of commission at the start of the movie, because that part is just redundant in uh, in the movie that we got um, and and have a big time jump in there where we we are dealing with Batman in whatever sort of prison. And I had you know, said like, hey, Wayne Manor would be really interesting. Instead, he could be inside his own cave like that would be really cool. Um, and I uh, I. I stand by that. Like, I, you know, oftentimes I'm like, oh, yeah, I kind of remember this, like, viewpoint I had. Mm-hmm. But this one, I'm, I I, I really think that this movie uh, fails by having that whole question of how does he how does he even get out and come back? It's it's the same problem that, like, Last Jedi had where it's like, well, if people can just leave and come back, what's the threat of, you know, the, this, like, weird predation scene that we've got going on there? Like, in, in the ship chase in that case and in, in here with, with Bane, like, running rampant in, in Gotham. Um, I, I just find it wild that they can't try to bottle it so that it, you know, effectively creates a diehard situation. Yeah. Isn't it more interesting where it's like, well, Batman not only, you know, is, you know, on the ropes because he is, you know, broken and, you know, his resources are, uh, diminished and, and, you know, all the, all these things, uh, that are working against Batman specifically. And then also there's no backup coming. There's no cavalry that's coming. There's no way to get out even. Mm-hmm. Like, it's either you just accept death or you, like, continue on and, like, make sure th- and, you know, get a win. Um, and I, I think that this the, – the movie we got, by virtue of making Gotham a place that was accessible and – at least to Batman, um, loses out on what could have been really cool. Like, compare it to the Arkham games, you know? Like, those are doing the same basic thing – um, especially both Arkham Asylum and Arkham City, where Batman's sort of the only person because he was already on the inside um, and can't, you know, can't get off and like has to, you know, sort of explore this this central area. Um, I guess what I'm saying is that this movie should have been a Metroidvania. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. If, I know. Yeah. You, 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 I honestly, like all the points made in the episode we just listened to were all incredibly valid and actually really like i think solid pitches right like in terms of like you know don't have him be retired like you know because you're it's redundant right like that actually really rang true with me as i was listening to it i was like yeah that is true it's so weird to have him like just kind of already be retired and then kind of to go back into retirement um, I don't know how I feel about Batman dying, uh, which is something that was suggested in the, oh, the yeah, episode. We were real hardcore about that one. We were like, yeah, you should have it come to an end. Um, and and like, I think, I think, yeah, I think like, I don't remember who said it, it was like, no, DC is never going to let that happen. And like, absolutely. Um, it, it was Ben who said that. Yeah. And absolutely, Ben, you are 100% correct. Um, I just think that like, um, yeah, I'm not, I'm not sure I'm on board with that. I think like maybe retiring, you know, for real. But I think point is you don't let him retire for the first movie, right? Like if you let him hang up the cowl or even like train someone else, that's fine. You know, I I'm, I just think that uh, it, it's such a it's such a strangely slotted and redundant just movie it's just so and and like there are times where it feels like it's really like struggling to get going you know like in in it doesn't well i gotta say like the the whole reason that like the retirement like why it felt like he needed to die at the end is because he starts the movie retired. Uh Um, And like, that feels like the natural progression where a person who has given up is, is forced to give it, get, give it his all until he ultimately dies. It's Logan in that scenario. Um, Versus here, he's already retired and him retiring at the end just feels like, Oh, I, I I took a break from my retirement to go back to being Batman, but I'm, I'm, I'm done now. Like, Mm -hmm. what is this curse that Michael Caine is sort of expressing? Like, Bruce Wayne was already retired for a portion of it. He was miserable because he's a miserable, terrible person. Yeah. But like he was retired and for that stretch. And that's why I, I think that honestly, the fact that they open with him retired kills all of the momentum of this movie because you don't get to deal with him 
well, you have the redundant arc of him being taken out of commission and having to work his way back twice. Um, mm-hmm. But also it then defangs him surviving the at the end because then, it, like I said, just feels like a detour in this retired man's like, uh, you know, midlife crisis mm-hmm. as opposed to like – the the natural conclusion of a person who was going to fight until he died and finally choosing life at the end. Right. And I think that that would have overall been more compelling. I mean, like you could even have him kind of like be struggling in the beginning, right? Like you can say, okay, he's been at this for a long time. He's really freaking banged up, right? Because you think about it, if, he, if you're fighting that long, um, as a vigilante, even with your wonderful toys, um, your body's going to feel broken. I mean, like, I, I know I sometimes sleep wrong and I feel that my back hurts. So that's just part of aging. Imagine if I was going out and street fighting every night um, to catch insane lunatics. It'd be even worse. So I think it'd be okay to have him, like, be achy and maybe even considering retirement. You know, like a conversation about that. But then feeling that like he's just stuck, called into this kind of thing, which kind of gives you that nice, grizzled, older Batman that, that I think people really gravitate to, you know. Um, and I think that would have been a nicer, you know, progression because if he retires, then he he doesn't have to feel, you know, the as many aches and pains anymore, and he can like you said, choose to live his life to, 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 to just be Bruce Wayne, to put down all of that burden that he's kind of been, uh, you know, carrying for all of this time. And that would have been at least a nicer conclusion to, you know, it would have, it would have felt more cathartic, I think by having him retired and then, coming out of it and then retiring again, it just makes you feel like, well, what's going to stop you from having to put the mask back on in a couple of years? You know, like that's, that's what I think, you know, just when you think you're there, you're out, they pull you back in kind of thing, you know? So it doesn't really give the same kind of, um, but if you already put the conflict of, I am already be like, I'm already getting broken down. I'm older this is not necessarily fun, but it's something that I have to do. It's a responsibility. Um, it's really hard living these double lives. And you give him all that conflict right at the beginning of the film. And then by the end of the film, he's able to like just put all of that away and just be Bruce Wayne. That would have been nice and cathartic and a nice way to say goodbye to this series of films, um, which are – all flawed in their own ways. And the, the, the most basic is just that Batman is not a good detective in any of these films, but especially in this one. He's, he's, he's like, honestly, just not good at figuring things out and never has been no, he is. through this whole trilogy. It's it's the himboist Batman, frankly. Yeah, that's true. He does a lot of push-ups, and they show off how many push-ups he does, but, you know. Yeah, he's he's not the great detective at all. Unfortunately. Um, so, thinking about the, like, the whole, like, quest to, uh, to, to, to be Batman and, and to potentially, like, push yourself to, to death, uh, or, or choose, choose life in this scenario. Um, I do want to shout out, uh, Red from Overly Sarcastic Productions did a recent detailed diatribe, uh, about Batman. Is it a curse or a choice? And it's a really good discussion of, of, I think the themes that we're kind of discussing here. Um, and, and we love Red and and Overly Sarcastic Productions. Mm -hmm. Red has been on, uh, this show, uh, talking about Valerian in the City of a Thousand Planets, um, and may or may not possibly be in an upcoming episode of the show that has is in the can but has not come out yet. Uh, just, just that, that. Yeah. Um, and also Red and Bloom have both been on Men of Steel talking about uh, my adventures with Superman. So I uh, just wanted to shout them out because they're awesome and they've given us a huge shot in the arm on our YouTube channel. So, so I just I need sure. to be uh, – uh, Sufficiently appreciative of them because they're awesome. Uh, but uh, yeah, so man, like 
we we talk a lot in this episode about the the did did you ever see the like the 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 three part trailer that they like Warner's released in the in the, the preparation of the Dark Knight Rises coming out? Yes. Uh, it's so goddamn cool. Like it looks so compelling and like, su- like such an interesting journey across all three movies. And then you look at the actual movie that we got here and there's good shots, but man, it just isn't doing it enough in terms of the character across the three movies. And like, that's such a bummer to me. Like, do you have thoughts about how you would have, have ended this? That isn't stuff that we already covered or, um, like where where are you coming from uh looking at the the trilogy and like how you would approach it here yeah you know that's it's it's hard too right cuz like if we're thinking like um the whole the whole trilogy i actually honestly am almost right on board with everyone except for him dying um in terms of like he shouldn't have been retired i also think that like yeah, I'm I'm almost certain that like it should have just been Bane. <laughs> um like I'm kind of okay with involving Catwoman. Um or, or choosing between the ladies. Cho- choosing between them. Um but I do like Catwoman a little bit better only because the idea of giving him like a a semi ally especially since the only thing is then we lose that wonderful tie okay hold on let me rethink because i wasn't expecting over the arc of the trilogy right so now i have to like really think about this because if we're losing you know what i kind of want him to come home so maybe talia has to be there okay hot cat woman <laughs> um and kind of have this be like kind of a a last ditch effort to kind of call bruce home <laughs> <laughs> to his assassin roots um keep Bane. yeah let me throw out this as a possibility so i think that the decision to have bane be a former member of the league of shadows as opposed to a current member of the league of shadows was an attempt to make him stand right. out more as of his own character um yeah and i would argue that if he was a current member like he is their top enforcer coming, then the League of Shadows is really the villain in the situation. And then Talia being revealed to be controlling them and or uh, Mm -hmm. a counter agent to them or something to that effect uh, all works really well. But then it's still just really kind of one villain. And so Catwoman as the separate agent of chaos wouldn't be, you know, one of three villains. It would be she's sort of this one character that's off on the side. Yeah, no, I I agree with that because that's what I'm thinking because, you know, you if we're doing this to tie the trilogy, right, he starts by training, right, with the League of Shadows. So, like, it would be nice to really end it with that, but 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 to make them the main kind of villain of like a, like a pay up kind of moment, right? Like, because they didn't get everything from their investment in Bruce. And I think that that would be uh, more interesting. I think um, one of the things that you've definitely brought up is bringing Bane into the picture sooner. <laughs> and kind of, I think that he should be brought in sooner. And then Talia should be a later on reveal control kind of thing. So it's kind of like, oh shit, this is actually the League of Shadows. Like you can know that Bane's working for someone else, but I think like um, that should be like the the twist somewhere in the middle of the movie that like, it's like, oh, oh, it's actually for the League. Oh, oh shit. You know, that's why they're here. And I think that that would be, way more interesting and then that way it's kind of like Bruce has to battle his past um in order to get his like future and be free of all the responsibilities of you know who he has become what he has become the symbol that he is and all that stuff because that just makes it more interesting and you can have a lot of the same beats you can have a lot of the the, the same um or, or some of the same set pieces but just rearranged um yeah i just had a crazy idea um all right so what if in having it be the league of shadows 
who is sending Bane into mm-hmm. the situation and having Talia be the person running it all. Um, what if the revelation is that like Ra's al Ghul or Ra's al Ghul as he was in Batman Begins, um, that Ra's al Ghul um, allowed himself to die in in Batman Begins, you know, the whole, I don't even have to kill you, or I don't have to kill you, I just don't have to save you uh, scene. Like, if that actually was an intentional, like, situation, in order for Batman to think that he was right. free of the League for the time, um, and then to have Batman run wild in Gotham, and we get this whole escalation, we get this whole situation where, like, new threats pop up and everything, to sort of have have a thing where Batman creates chaos mm-hmm. by virtue of his existence, um, and that that was the weapon oh, that's so good. that the League of Shadows was actually employing on the city. Having Batman realize that he himself was always a sleeper agent for the League, even though he thinks he's trying to do the right thing. I love this. And that Bane coming in here and breaking Batman was sort of like, all right, Batman, you've caused all these threats to rise up and be, you know, so dangerous in the city and you're keeping in, in check. But what happens when I break you? Mm-hmm. And now they are just allowed to go go free. Um you know, and it doesn't have to be like super villains. Like it doesn't have to be like oops, all Batman villains. It could just be like you know all the all the crazies and whatnot. But like you could imply a lot of things about this all. The same way that they say like, well, we tried economics or we tried plague rats. You know, like they they think outside the box and how they try to take down a city. And maybe in this scenario, it's put the hero in there so that the villains rise, and then pull the hero away so that the villains to des- destroy the city. Right. Yeah. And have that be revealed to be the big plan and that Rachel Ghoul being OK with dying was because he thinks in a bigger you know, framework than just his own life. Um, and that Batman having to rise up to defeat him um, in part has to be able to say like, well, but that's fucked up and I'm not going to take the lesson of my mentor uh, and die in the process, I'm going to live and I'm going yeah. to live in spite of him um, so that you, you know, kind of create like a, a through line for why his survival at the end makes like narrative sense um, for the character. I love all of this. Yes, this is this is how we fix the movie. Yeah, no, that's good because it's it's so um it's honestly pretty optimistic for Batman. That's a really optimistic ending. I love it. Um, I no, I actually really 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 like that because it kind of i think it's actually a really nice bookend first of all for the trilogy right like as a like a three set right um and also it's kind of like it gives batman to do what batman does best which is feel guilt in the middle of all of this because he's very good at being like, yeah. oh no, it's me. Um, especially the moodier Batman, especially the Nolan Batman. He's very good at being moody. He's a he's a very moody himbo. Um, and yeah, I think that would have absolutely worked with like this entire series and the way that this Batman interacts with this world. And I think just like in general, it would have been more cohesive and to this story. Because as is what we got was a structural mess and kind of like bits and pieces of like ideas, like good ideas, but like not really anything that was fully like drawn out right like like the you know like some of the financial stuff like that's of that time for sure but it's kind of because it's just kind of a subplot in the background right Uh, of of everything else that's happening it kind of there's there's not really a real focal point in the film yeah it keeps getting moved around. And I think yeah. that would actually like give you the real focal point. And it's just like you were the tool all along. And now now that you like the city has come to depend on you so much, when we take you away, what happens to the city? Right. And and then, you know, 
yeah, then he has struggled to come back and set things right and then be like, okay, I can no longer do this because one, I want to live, you know, a normal life, but two, me just being here the way that I am is, you know, causing the chaos that, you know, so I need to just stay in my mansion and, you know, you know, just live a normal, you know, there's life. Do some charity work, maybe. Right. If only he'd set up schools and. <laughs> yeah, ahead of time, as opposed to. Right, right. In his death. Um, on, on that note, what what did you think of Joseph Gordon-Levitt as as Robin, effectively, but but as John Blake, Officer John I mean, Blake. listen, I I didn't hate it. I just was just like, okay. But like, it was not, it wasn't like something like I was like, yo, that's amazing. Or, oh, that's so much fun. And it was like, yeah. Really, like, I don't I don't know what kind of chuckle they thought they were going to get out of us by, like, having his name be Robin. Like, as if, like, I feel like it's one of those things right. where, like, he should have looked at the camera and winked, like, huh, huh, Robin. Um, like, right, exactly. Like, I don't understand. Gracious. Like, it just, I like, was like, I, hmm. so, again, I think by that, by that time I was so like underwhelmed by the film <laughs> that it was kind of like oh of course I think um but, you know like I just feel like I didn't hate it I didn't love it I just kind of felt indifferent to it because by that point I was just kind of like I this movie's a mess so but yes the the whole like naming him Robin thing was like pretty lame I think I was just like you know, giving him a name that doesn't exist. There's so many freaking Robins, too. Like, there's so many Robins. Yeah. Like, you could have picked any of the names. Yeah, I mean, like, Tim Drake is the really obvious one in terms of being, like, very similar. But, like, you could also <clears throat> have to be Terry McGinnis, like, if you just want to, like, right. say, oh, he becomes Batman next, you know. Absolutely. Be- beyond this movie, he's he's Batman. Absolutely. There's just I feel like it's weird to just kind of like have all these different like have him be like John and then like basically say, Oh no, but my real name's Robin. Like you're not gonna go out on the street as Robin. Right. It, like what if like it was weird. Robin's an alias. Like <laughs> I became a hero superhero, so I used my first real name. What? Like it's uh, it, it was right. just kind of one of those things where I was just like, yeah, let's whatever. I think they wanted us to be like, yo, and I kind of wonder if it was like a like something they added on, like like the character's name was <laughs> done all along, and they were like, what if? Hear me out. What if he's Robin? That feels like a late in the drafting stage kind of inclusion. Yeah. Like, how do we make him? Like, how do we give people a correlation? Oh, why don't we have him say his real name is Robin? (gasps) Whoa, you're a genius. No, no. It's just. Well, it feels like they didn't want to, like, play their hand too soon. They didn't want us all to realize it. It, But, like, we all we all knew. Right. Like, yeah, for sure. I mean, like, I, I, I knew because I knew people who worked on the movie and they told me but like we, we we knew like we knew just from the casting like who is he going to play obviously robin he is the most obvious like casting choice of what, what was this 2012 uh to be mm-hmm. robin like yeah you know it's just i yeah i think that's probably you're right it's probably what happened was like well if we name him one of the names and people are going to know right away that he's going to, but then why wasn't the, I feel like the alias should have at least been one of the other Robin's names, right? Like, I, I feel like by naming him, by, by him saying, my, my real name is Robin, it just felt so weird. It just felt too on the nose, too winky wink. And like, that's not what these movies are you know like if you're going to be in a movie with arnold schwarzenegger making puns then maybe being like my real name is robin wink wink maybe that's not so bad but here it's it just it doesn't fit the vibe 
I I mean, if he was, for example, Richard and, you know, we didn't actually like catch what his like officer name was or like they weren't like they didn't spend a lot of time on it. Um, and then to be like, oh, like, actually, my parents used to call me Dick. Oh, Dick Grayson. That, that has a nice ring to it or something like that. Right. Like, like, honestly, if everyone called him rich. Yeah. You know, like and because then you you honestly wouldn't like think of it. Right. Like, oh, yeah, yeah. Rich, can you help over here? And like, you know, yeah. I mean, nerds would like ner- like nerds would. But, right. Like, that doesn't. But that's specific to, to us, like not not to the general right. public. Like a lot of people wouldn't catch that. Honestly, you could say Dick Grayson and a lot of people wouldn't catch it because let's be honest. There are more people who are like, yeah, I'm down for checking out Batman stuff than like know about Batman stuff. Yeah, for sure. And like, here's the thing. Call him rich for like most of the movie. And then maybe somewhere in like middle-ish, you let his like officer badge be seen. And it's like R. Grayson. And then it was like, wait a minute, it's confirmed. He is it. And then like for the people who don't necessarily know, he can actually say, yeah, they call, you know, yeah, my parents used to call me Dick. And then people were like, oh my God, he's Dick Grayson. Like there's like levels of who gets in on the joke, right? Because there'll be some people that get it like right from the get go. And then there's some people who will be like, oh, Grayson. And then there'll be some people who won't get it till the very end till it's spelled out for them. That would have been preferable to what we got with him. Yeah, before he was an orphan, he was a circus performer. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it, it's just, it's a, like, again, I think he's fine in this movie, you know, aside from just being such a great detective with, God, he, he's he's such, such Tim Drake. He's such Tim Drake energy. Um, True. But, you know, <laughs> casting Joseph Gordon-Levitt at at the time was like, yeah, obviously this is the person you would cast for a Robin. And, like, it's about the Robin that you were going to get in a Christopher Nolan Batman movie. I, I can't imagine them doing, like, a real Robin character. Um, yeah. I don't know why you couldn't ever, but, like, at, at, at you know, th- this was not the franchise that was going to do that. No. Uh, and. And so his role is fine. The idea of him, you know, having the torch passed to him is fine. I would have liked to see, like, some sort of cool new, like, action, fig- you know, toyetic uh, armor for him to wear. Um, that, you know, it could have been a, a very Nightwing-ish armor, and that would have been cool. That would have been very uh, cool. I would have liked that, too. But, you know, what, 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 whatever. Uh, but but he he's fine in, in the movie overall. Yeah, I, th- I think so. It's... It's fine. Like, I think that, like, look, if you're listening to us go on and on about the flaws of this film, know that if you like it, more power to you. Because you've just got tons more imagination than we do. Because you make the plot holes work for you. And bless you for that. Um, but I just think that, like, this this movie becomes... I, I think, like, arguably, this is a bad film with good performances and poor writing and it's a shame because the rest of the trilogy is so good it's it's a good looking film <laughs> you know um like yeah it and i think that like compared to the other two movies especially that second movie it's just such a, a disappointment you know yeah also, I, I should note that I, I recognize that neither of them, but especially The Dark Knight, does not hold up as well as it should. Yeah, But for they sure. hold up better than this one does. Uh, this one didn't mm-hmm. hold up very well from the moment it came out. And, like, it 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 hit its plateau pretty quick uh, because there are plenty of good things about it. But, like, rewatching it is a perfectly fine experience mm-hmm. minus the fact that it's disappointing, but it was very disappointing. And it, you know, even, even with the, the, you know, a, a peg taken out of both Batman begins and especially dark Knight, um, there's still a, a higher echelon than, than this one. And like, you know, it, it's just a bummer that the trilogy ended on 
a, a less amazing note, but it is very difficult to land trilogies. Uh, even though people think that Hollywood loves trilogies, tr- Hollywood isn't necessarily actually very good at trilogies. Um, and even the best of them, yeah. oftentimes the third. Entry a l- is a not lot the of the time, like a lot of the time, the third is not the strongest. Generally, the second one is the strongest. Generally. Yeah. Uh, oftentimes. And and honestly, the, the movie franchise that we'll be talking about on the next bonus episode is actually very much doing that whole situation. Because next time we're going to be talking about uh, Captain America Civil War. Um, and that uh, the Winter Soldier, I... I I, I keep as like one of my like yeah. top three uh, MCU movies of all time. Um, and the Captain America trilogy. I love the whole trilogy, but like, yeah, Civil War is like my least favorite of the three. Um, not that I really considered it a, a real trilogy, but uh, it, it kind of is. And uh, yeah. Uh, but we've got a couple of cool bonus episodes coming up, actually. Uh, after that, we've got Tron Legacy, which is a really fun one. Um, and then the one that I've been really excited for, and also not the best of the trilogy, although I would say the first is the best. Okay, one. Uh, I really Ninja love Turtles this 3. that film, so I will be rewatching it in order to discuss it after we listen to it. It's a really fun episode. It's just me and Addie, and I start spitballing all kinds of ideas. But, the, uh, you know, I can spoil this for everyone right now because this is an episode that came out in 2017. Um, my big pitch is like, well, why in the time travel movie don't they encounter the foot in the past? Um, and, and we go into a lot more detail beyond that. But, like, that's, like, one of those spots where you're, you're like, isn't that up? Like, what? Why? why? And the second I say that, I'm sure oh. you have, like, a glass-breaking sound in your brain, and you're like – Oh, yeah, okay. it is really messed up that they don't encounter the foot in the past. Like, that should be the one through line of the entire film. And yet, people who wrote it were like, nah, we don't need him. <laughs> now, we're going to use the Shredder's music for a different character, um, but not actually <laughs> reference the foot, even though they'd be like zero effort to insert. All you need, is, you could even have for goddamn sure. foot soldiers. Because it's the foot. Well, yeah, uh, we they, will get they, to that. Anyway, um, yeah, so again, Civil War is coming up next, then Tron Legacy, and then Turtles 3. Um, it's, yeah. It, it was a good first year for another pass. Like, I, I'm very happy with the, uh, the just the, the massive episodes that we've looked I'm at so far. I'm also excited. And that we've got coming up. Um, and it's also fun that this is the episode that's dropping right after we did the episode of, like, the full episode of Another Pass on The Oath, the Batman short film that Such I was a, good film. a producer on. It's a great Batman film. I was playing D anD D over the weekend, mm-hmm. with a, uh, like I was guesting in someone else's game, um, and the the people who I was hanging out with, like they were showing me clips of like stuff that they've worked on because they're part of the Baltimore Rock Opera Society, um, and I was like, oh, cool. Well, can I show you the oath? Like it's it, you know, it's like you know, fifteen minutes, but uh, it's a really cool Batman movie that I worked on. And then it turned out that Wes Johnson, the voice of Batman in that, uh, was was friends with one of the people wow. who I was like playing the the game with. Uh, which is just like awesome. And Wes Johnson, for the record, is a extremely prolific voice actor, and he's the voice of the Capitals. He's also both the voice of a character, or the voice of Batman uh, in The Oath, and as well as playing a Klingon in the Star Trek fan film I'm working on currently. Um, super cool uh, guy and super cool connections to, uh, to, to be had. Um, yeah, so that I, I think covers all of that. Um, We've got another regular episode of Another Pass after this, um, which uh, I'm excited to have drop. But you guys can find out about that when it actually drops. Uh, Otherwise, uh, yeah, uh, we're now available on YouTube, which is which is a new thing and has gone very well. Um, Adding the, the full episodes of the podcast to the YouTube channel has actually allowed us to hit those like magic numbers where YouTube actually Yay! like cares about us. Um, and so we're kind of exploring mm-hmm. what that is, but that's like really cool and, and, and awesome. Uh, so though that, you know, you, you could check out it on YouTube in addition to all the other places where you can get podcasts. Um, I think that kind of stuff I wanted to, to we go did, over on this. We episode. did that in, you know, well, awesome. probably slightly more time than it took Batman to get out of that cave and back to Gotham. So we got back real quick. Slightly more because it was like no no real time. <laughs> Break my back again, Daddy! Come on, uh, Bane, Daddy. Anyway, 
Uh, so yeah, uh, we'll be back in two weeks with a regular episode of the show. Um, but until next time, pass uh, it on. If you enjoyed the show, pass it on. All right, Josue, let's go through our new comic day stack. We have a lot to review. I know. Maybe we've gone too far. Well, let's see. Marvel, of course, DC. I got image, dark horse, black mask, boom, IDW. Aftershock, Vault, of course, Mad Cave, Oni, Valiant, Scout, Magma, Behemoth. Wow, that's a lot. Oh, well, all we need now is a name for our show. We need a name for a show about reviewing comic books every week. Something clever, but not too clever. Like a pun? It's kind of cheesy. Yeah, it's something that seems funny at first, but we might regret later on as an impulsive decision a few dozen episodes in. Yeah, we'll think of something. Join Keith and Osway for We Have Issues, a weekly show reviewing almost every new comic released each week. Available on Geek Elite Media and wherever you listen to your podcasts. My brain's in such a weird spot right now because, uh, so I've listened to the episode a couple of times in the last, uh, you know, few days. And uh, then right before I saw a YouTube comment on a Man of Steel video asking for me to explain a thing. And I couldn't remember what the hell they were talking about. So I just had to listen to the end of a Man of Steel episode to figure out what thing they were referencing. Because, <laughs> like, they didn't say when. They said it was towards the end, but they didn't say when towards the end. Right. Um, and so now my brain's, like, all of, it, it was the Man of Steel episode. So, the, like, my brain's, like, all cut, tied up in Man of Steel right now and not The Dark Knight Rises. Um <laughs> I mean, equally complicated film from the perspective of people who like a character and may not feel like it's <laughs> quite represented correctly. Yeah. Inside me, there are two wolves, <laughs> Man of Steel and The Dark Knight Rises. I think I think uh, if I were, this was a court of law, and I would say that like like one was worse than the other. I would say that Dark Knight Rises is the worst of the two, but just because of the uh, egregious um, time jumps, like I'm like going from <laughs> like just getting back into Gotham after possibly every inroad is destroyed, except for the one bridge supposedly that you sneak yeah. back in on, which. I like. It's just. We should save this for the actual. Episode. Yeah, yeah. I'm sorry. <laughs> You're right. <laughs> the comparison is one thing, but like the we don't need to <laughs> we don't need to like adjudicate the entire movie first and then like come back to it. Fair enough. Fair enough. Let's begin. Okay. Yeah. CPOV. Certainpov.com.